Hello everyone, Voodoo here. So I'm here today with a Havoc Demon Hunter pre-patch guide. And the thing with this guide is that if you've been playing Havoc Demon Hunter in season three or season four, um, nothing's changing. It's the exact same. Havoc has not really received any changes on pre-patch at all. All the new stuff's coming with hero talent trees, which don't come out until the actual full release of The War Within. Um, all we have is a nerf to our leech and then some vengeance nerfs. But uh, if you're someone who's looking to pick up uh, Have a Human Hunter for the new patch, for the new expansion, um, then this video will go over the basics and stuff like that for you to use during the pre-patch. So nothing crazy. If you are a regular view of the channel, probably can skip this video, but I do appreciate you clicking on it. But if everybody else, let's get on to talents, rotation, and all that stuff uh, for Have a Human Hunter in the pre-patch. All right, so here we are on, well, this is on live. We're not even on the pre-patch servers because there's no point in that. Again, the only thing changing, this is getting nerfed a bit. Uh, otherwise, Havoc's gonna remain the exact same. So for talent builds, this is what you want to play in single target. Now this does determine uh, and require you to actually have the tier set, uh, Accelerated Blade and Furious Throws and Serrated Glaive and Soul Scar. If you don't have the tier set, then you'll just play something like this. We'll so just drop that out for that, drop out Furious Throws for Blind Fury. Um, Serrated Glaive can stay in, it's perfectly fine for single target, and you'll drop out uh, Soul Scar for either Inner Demon or Restless Hunter. Inner Demon, I think normally right now, sims a little bit ahead, but I think Restless Hunter is probably better for burst damage. So if you don't have tier set, you'll play something like that. If you do have the tier set, you will play something like this. Um, otherwise though, doesn't really super change. Now this does use the movement stuff. If you're looking for something without the movement, um, then you wanna use something like this. So this is the low mover build. The only movement in this build is that you have to use Tactical Retreat. Um, or Ventual Retreat, sorry, every 20 seconds. Otherwise, it's mostly just the same stuff. You're just pushing Chaos Strike a ton and just trying to stay in demon form as much as possible. Again, if you don't have the tier set, then you'll probably drop a lot of these points here and pick up something similar uh, to this. You do have a free point down here to put in a few different places. Um, Relentless Onslaught's pretty good. You can put it up in Improved Chaos Strike that does a few damage there. Um, there's a few choices there. It doesn't really matter either way. Um, you can put it down in, even into like Chaos Theory or something. Realistically though, just get the tier set. It should be pretty easy to get. Uh, if you are playing at all in the pre-patch uh, and should help you out a little bit in terms of doing damage up into the new expansion. Um, for Mythic Plus, you'll play something like this. So this is our best Mythic Plus build. Now you can change out a few notes here. Realistically, the choice between uh, Glaive Tempest and Essence Break is realistically they're about the same. Uh, Glaive Tempest is a little bit easier to use, better AOE damage, must work, much worse priority or single target damage. And this one here has much better priority and single target, but a little bit worse AOE. So realistically, not too big of a difference. Over the course of a key, you'll notice no real difference between the two. Uh, it's just going to be a choice about which one you want to end up playing. Um, again, this using the movement stuff. The movement stuff for Mythic Plus is much, much better than the no mover stuff. In Raid, they're about the same, but in Mythic Plus, this is much, much better. So I really would recommend playing this build and not playing a no mover one. But if there is a no mover Mythic Plus build, um, then you want to use something like this. So this is the no mover Mythic Plus build. Now, again, if you don't like the movement stuff, this is an option, but this is a lot worse than the ignition stuff. Um, with the inertia and things like that. The, you know, again, if you don't like that, then this is a choice for you. Uh, again, if you don't have tier set, you can change some points around uh, like this and then do something like that. And that would work pretty fine. Um, but realistically, again, just get the tier set. It shouldn't be too hard to get it with how many charges we have of the catalyst. Um, you're still taking initiative here, even though you don't technically need to use tactical retreat because it's just so, so powerful in the hit plus. Uh, proccing all the time on just random mods as you go into a pack. With all the talent builds, we'll go briefly over how to play them, and then we'll talk very briefly about gear uh, before we end it off. All right, so here we are with this rotation. So we're gonna do just the movement stuff. I'm not really gonna cover the no mover stuff. If you wanna see that, I'm gonna direct you to Wowhead, uh, where Shad has a guide for that. I just don't think with the, how brief I wanna make this video that it has much of a place here. We'll have guides for that in the War Within, but I think for the pre-patch stuff, there's just not a ton of a point to it now if you do want it again season four pre-patch stuff all the same so you can look through my channel for the rest of it go check that out but uh, for simple stuff here we'll do the opener and then we'll talk about priority list the opener is going to be immolation aura followed by sigil of flame right before pull starts you're going to fell blade then use eye beam followed by the hunt fell rush essence break backflip and death sweep meta Death Sweep again, Annihilation, and then I Beam, and that's your opener. Now, there you'll see with the movement stuff, I wasn't super on target. Um, with a normal boss, yeah, you'll stay on target very easily. This is a very small hitbox. Even with like a pack like this, there's a lot more space. So don't worry about that too much. 
From there, you're gonna hit a priority system. So the system is to never let immolation or a cap on charges. Use your buffs on things like death sweep and the hunt, uh, which should be pushed on cooldown as much as possible. Use vengeful retreat on cooldown as much as possible. Uh, other and then otherwise, just make sure you're not capping on fury uh, and you're spending the rest on chaos strike. It's a pretty simple uh, priority list. Um, between your cooldowns and then whenever you hit a point where you have I-beam essence break back up you will go back into your um, essence break window so for that you're going to do pretty simple stuff you're going to do immolation aura backflip and I-beam at the same time bell rush in essence break death sweep and then two annihilations so otherwise you're just doing the priority system with never capping immolation auras um, using the hunt, using blade dance and death sweep, using annihilation, using uh, fury generators, and then using chaos strike. Um, pretty simple stuff. It's not too complex. The most important thing, and the hardest part, is just dealing with movement, right? So just making sure you know where you are at all times, um, how far your fellowship is going to go, and stuff like that. So pretty simple stuff. Again, nothing too bad. Uh, but that's kind of your basic little rotation for Havoc in the pre-patch. All right, so for Mythic Plus, the opener is going to be very similar to that for a single target. Of course, we're basically just changing out uh, Essence Break for Glaive Tempest and moving it like slightly ahead. Um, there's like 40 different openers you can do for Mythic Plus and AoE rotations, and they're all basically the same thing. So don't worry too much about it. Um, as long as you have your inertia going over a lot of your abilities and your immolation aura is ticking, you're going to basically do the same thing, and it's not going to really matter. Um, I'm not going to use a trinket here. Uh, generally, you'd normally have a trinket with this that I just don't have equipped right now. I don't feel like equipping, um, but that doesn't matter too much. Uh, we'll talk about that in a different section. So start off again with Sigil of Flame in the pack. Walk in Immolation Aura in the pack. Uh, use an I Beam. Use a Hunt. Fell Rush. Fell Blade back in. Glaive Tempest. Death Sweep. Vengeful Retreat. Meta. Death Sweep. We're gonna Immolation Aura and Fell Rush again for the I Beam. And then after that, we'll get one more Death Sweep. And that's kind of your opener. Um, from here, we go into a very similar um, situation in terms of priority, where for M+, you're kind of just using all the buttons as they come off cooldown. Um, you want to use Death Sweep as much as you can. You want to use Glaive Tempest as much as you can. You want to use Vengeful Treat as much as you can. Um, you want to make sure you're not capping on Fury. You want to make sure you use Sigil Flame. Um, all those things are very important, and you're kind of just lighting them up. One thing that matter is sometimes you will have Emulation Auras that line up with Glaive Tempest and Death Sweep or uh, Blade Dance, which is important. But otherwise, like we're just out here spending Fury, not capping on Immolation Auras, not capping on um, all of our buttons, lining up Inertia onto our strongest abilities like Glaive Tempest, like Death Sweep, like I Beam. Um, really nothing too crazy. Make sure you're in the pack when Immolation Aura explodes. Uh, and that's it. It's basically the same as single target. The one difference, of course, is that Fell Rush is actually a lot better. So if you ever have a point where you can use Fell Rush or use a Chaos Strike, Fell Rush is actually better against three plus targets. So we're on five targets here. Uh, obviously, you want to still have Fell Rush for your Immolation Auras, um, but there's tons of times where you're going to have a Fell Rush with no Immolation Aura. Uh, you can just use that. It's going to be better than a Chaos Strike uh, on three plus targets. Um, with Annihilation, you're going to be better on, I think, five plus targets, but generally, you know, when you're in meta, you do want to use the Annihilations. Um, but yeah, that, that's it. So opener and then just use i-beam use death sweep if you're in demonic uh, hold blade dance a little bit if i beams have to come up uh use glaive tempest use the hunt use immolation aura and try and have inertia on any of those four things i just mentioned and if you're out of those you have nothing else just use chaos strike don't over cap and um, use Fell Rush over Chaos Strike when possible at three plus targets. All right, so the last thing we're gonna talk about is going to be gear. At this point, you should have a lot of easy access to gear through Dinars. Um, you should be able to basically go into like LFR or raids or something and just grab all the Dinars you ever could possibly need and basically grab everything. Um, we'll go over the important stuff. So first things first is crafted stuff. Now, if you're just making this character for pre-patch, I don't really think I, I personally wouldn't care about crafting things, um, but if you do want to craft stuff, the best thing is blue silk and lining for both um, slots. I have a mine on my wrist and belt. Generally, that's a really good place. The only other one really could, you could use is going to be boots, um, but generally, you know, those are all good. This just gives you a ton of mastery, which is very good. Um, in terms of stats, mastery and crit are your best two, and then the rest you want to just kind of fill in with haste and verse. You should sim yourself. At this point, we're getting really far into the stat DRs. You kind of see what I have here. Uh, I have a little bit higher haste. I think I should, probably should get a little bit more mastery, but it uh, does not really matter in the grand scheme of things. Um, so from there, just buy some dinars. Um, best things to grab if you don't have a weapon is going to be Thornclaw's Claw. This might not sim the best in Mythic Plus, but it gives you a ton of priority and a lot of AOE with the dot bouncing around all the time. And it's just one of our best weapons. Um, you want to grab a trinket, 
Mana Grief Torch is really good in Mythic Plus and Raid. Um, Augury is probably your best bet in Raid. For Mythic Plus, you want to grab an Ashes of the Ember Soul and just use this with I Beam before you use your meta, right? So we start a meta with I Beam, then you'll use this um, so you get a lot of damage that way. So those are going to be your best trinket pickups. Um, and from there, just pick up kind of the rest of the things, right? You want to grab both rings, the Seal of Daenerys Chosen, which gives you fire uh, damage, and the Seal of Filial Duty, which gives you a shield. And then for the last thing, grab a Voice of the Silent Star. Um, I wouldn't play this in Mythic Plus if you're pushing keys, but if you're just doing like chill keys, this you can just use this for sure. This is a raid option. Otherwise, just grab a cloak with like crit or mastery or something like that. Um, and that's really kind of it. Offhand weapon, the best ones are going to be Storm Slash for, uh, for single target or a Dawn of the Infinite double time for Mythic Plus. But like, again, really, I wouldn't stress about getting anything super crazy if you're just making this for pre-patch. Um, I don't have a, a double time from this season because you can only get one once a week and I just haven't really cared because uh, it's season four. But like realistically, any full static weapon will be fine. Um, so yeah, that's like gear. Nothing too crazy. Consumables, just use um, the buzzing rune crit thing. Uh, use ice file corrupting rage, the crit thing again. And then use a uh, thousand bone tongue slicer for food. And then for enchants, use waking stats. Use the crit chant, uh, the critical strike stats. And then just sim yourself for gems. Uh, my sim wants me to use crit strike burst gems, but could be different for you. There you go. That's uh, that's kind of everything. So there we have it. Now this was supposed to be intended to be a very quick guide. Um, Pre-patch Demon Hunter is the exact same as season three, which is the exact same as season four Demon Hunter. Um, at least in season four, we have some different trinkets. So there's that, but uh, nothing's really changed the better part of almost a year now, which is uh, interesting, but uh, is what it is. And nothing's going to really change too much until we hit max level uh, in the war within. If you want a deeper dive in any of the things I covered here today, uh, check out my channel. I have a bunch of content for Havoc Demon Hunter ranging back um, basically all of Dragonflight, but at least in season four and season three, you can check on that, uh, get some tips there. Um, again, I didn't go over the no mover stuff because keeping it simple, but there are no mover guides and beginner guides for Havoc on my channel. So check those out as well. Um, there will be a ton more Havoc content throughout the War Within guides, stuff like that. I would expect if you're a regular viewer of this channel and you're still watching this far, A, appreciate it. Uh, B, expect to have some other melee stuff as well. Survival Hunter, Fury Warrior, maybe some other specs as well, but still have a bulk of the content. B, Havoc, Demon Hunter. We're not giving that up, uh, surprisingly, because it's not great in the War Within uh, in terms of playstyle, but uh, we'll still be manning it and doing content for it. So there you go, pre-patch guide. Um, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. A big thank you to all of my channel members. Thank you, Sky Elk, Andrew Keenel, 100,001 Zans, Brad Wisniak, Felfa Darren Dark Terror, and Magicman133. Thank you all so, so much. If you want to help support me and help fund the channels and the videos, follow the link in the description to become a channel member and get some cool perks in the process. Again, thank you all so much, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.